So o over a month, Steph, Meta is the only one of the the right in the sweet spot AI stocks that is higher. It's up three percent. Everything else has had decent pullbacks. Core weave down seven and a half. Oracle down ten. We've, we've been saying that. This trade is going to be difficult to see stabilization without Oracle and Coreweave stabilizing, right? Because they're the ones that are in the eye of the, the whole storm. I, I'm reminded what Apollo's Mark Rowan said in an interview last week about what's happening with some of the data center stocks and companies that have been loading up on debt, quote, hyperscalers are pretty safe. Intermediaries that are taking up the debt and the balance sheet risk not so much. So it's sort of to Josh's point, dispersion, hyperscalers versus others, on the notion that Oracle and Coreweave need to get their mojo back for this trade to stabilize for a longer period of time. I think you're getting looks. I think you're getting really good looks at some stocks, high quality companies that have fallen even though they've put up really good numbers. You mentioned Meta. That thing fell 26% from its high after they reported earnings because they were going to spend more on CapEx. I get it. But they were still able to grow 26% revenues, 20% earnings, margin expansion, free cash flow generation. You know I was adding to it. I don't know, I didn't know when the, where the bottom was, and I'm not even sure we've seen the bottom, but I do think the fundamentals are very, very strong. The same thing with Broadcom. Yeah, Broadcom's down 19% in I a mean, month. Josh was, you know, referencing it. You've been defending it every day. I, well, I have, and especially, I look at it to lose that multiple so quickly at 40 times forward estimates to 32 in a week is crazy when you have the growth that they have in terms of AI growth, 70% last quarter, expected to be 100% this next coming quarter. So that's a look. So Met is a look, Broadcom is a look. I'll tell you what's not a look. Oracle is not a look. Not a look. Not a look because they are not generating free cash flow. That's the biggest problem. And the debt market, the, that's the, the CDS spreads are telling you that they're worried and they're losing confidence. I just think you avoid that one. The other area I would be adding to, and I'm looking, are all of the industrial companies that I own. Like the Vernovas like and the, the Eatons and Quanta the Quanta Quanta services. Quanta services. And, and the reason, Scott, is because the backlogs are so incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. And backlogs matter. That's the revenue in hand. I don't care about the orders. Orders can get canceled. Vertiv, backlog of 30%, book to bill of 1.4. Quanta Services, backlog up 15% to all-time highs. Eaton, global uh, uh, backlogs up 20%. These, this is visibility. And so this is why if you get weakness like we did yesterday and pockets of weakness all around the, you know, throughout the year, you want to be adding to them. So can we take the Rowan comments from about a week or so ago and extrapolate from that that that's where the, the yes you can buy and the no maybe you can't just comes down to the line in the sand, the hyperscalers are pretty safe, he says, the intermediaries uh, that are taking up the debt and the balance sheet risk not so much. Now, I, I don't want to put words in Mr. Rowan's mouth, obviously, um, but one could surmise that, you know, it's the Oracles, it's the Core Weaves, it's some of the other stocks that have been in the eye of that whole conversation. And you have Oracle, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we haven't added to, it, added to it at all yet. We trimmed it above 300. Kind of watching it here. I, I don't love the price action. Thought we might use 180 as a bottoming. Hasn't happened. Watching it closely, it's it's in the bottom half of our portfolio. When it was at 300 and, and we trimmed it, it was it was a much higher weight. It really comes down to you know, again, these are the companies that are that are investing in building these data centers, um, the, the construction of it, and really they need the end user to broaden and they need that demand to come from the end user, and that's that's falling short of those expectations right now, and so I, I think that is the difference. Are you worried about this position that you have in that name? Not right now. I mean, it's about a 1.2 percent position. I, I mean, don't care about the size of it, yeah. honestly. We always try and do that yeah. on this show. I don't. I don't. That's, that doesn't that's matter. risk management. I, mean, I understand that, but are you worried about the position, whether it's a candy bar size or the whole thing? I mean, really, honestly, fun size below Seriously, 180. Man. Yeah, below 180. Um, you know, if, if we can't bounce this week with all the negativity, you know, as a commodity trader and a risk manager, you, you have to look at how the news impacts 
um, you know, what, what an asset's doing. And if all that news is really flushed out, we've had so much negativity. So if the next bad news or if we don't see if the bad news starts to wane, we need to see positive price action, you know, counterintuitive to what, what you would think. And that will tell you that it's bottoming. 180 is that area, and, and it's been kind of flirting with it all week. Right. So uh, the other big story today, without question, <clears throat> is Micron, okay? They had the beat, obviously, on the earnings. What's, this is yours too. Absolutely. What's it's really interesting to me on this one is that for the last two weeks, we probably had four or five or six positive calls from sell side firms on this name leading into the print, and boy, did those, did those pay off. Um, so they did $5.28 in cloud memory sales, doubled on an annual basis, best day since April 9th, upgraded at B of A to a buy, targets 300, target to 320 at Wedbush. B of A's trading desk today says, quote, Micron stellar earnings last night have provided a bit of a support for the recently rudderless AI trade. And for today, at least, this catalyst looks, to, looks set to halt the bleeding in AI and adjacent themes. Is that how you see it? Because a lot of these chip stocks, if you look down the list today, and we can throw up any number of them, they're, I think, all green. Yeah. All green. I, I, this is, as Dan Ives would say, this has been a double, double uh, table pounder of mine. I mean, I, I have been really pushing this name on the show quite a bit. I mean, to, to put it relative to Oracle, it's a more than 3% holding of ours. We also hold Micron in our concentrated portfolio of no more than 10 names. This, I mean, this is now with, with this earnings report and the, the numbers it's put up, it's now trading at, at nine times forward. I've been talking about this name going through a repricing, and it's gotten a tailwind of repricing here. So they, they pushed away their consumer business, and that's going to end in February. They are full focused on this high bandwidth memory to supply to data centers, and you can see it in the numbers. This, this is not a, a, I mean, it could double and still be a value stock at this point. I think Micron could go through a repricing. You can see this at 15 to 20 uh, times earnings, and I love this name right now. 57% growth this year on mm -hmm. revenues, year over year, and as well as next year. I mean, these, these numbers are eye-popping. The margins are, are tremendous, and then you look at free cash flow growth over, uh, over trailing 12 months, 740%. I mean, the numbers here are, are this is, this, these are NVIDIA-like numbers from a couple years ago. Are they, the type of growth. So are they, that, they're, they're the Ronaldo of AI now? <laughs> so you want to play, play the role of Dan Ives today because you know, they got the godfather of AI and Jensen Wong. <laughs> the messy of AI, I think, is Palantir. Yeah. So Ronaldo? I mean, Ronaldo. I, you know, it's been, around for, it's been around for a little while. It's going to show I, up and I be there for my, you. I think with Micron, and this is a really important concept just for all of our viewers, no matter what stage of investing you're at, one of the hallmarks of a healthy bull market is that it takes out its own trash. And when it builds conviction in a, a strong, powerful company that it really believes in, you can see the divergence in price very early. Micron has been a strong stock, but it's actually building in strength. And as it reports numbers, it doesn't always go up following each report, but you see how quickly it recovers. And look at this chart. It, the story tells itself. Contrast that with SMCI. The market decided this was trash. It was a $118 stock in March of 2024. And look how, how it has spent the last, I don't know, 20 months or so just continuously declining. It is now a $30 stock. Both of these are suppliers to this AI data center build-out theme, but the market has decided Micron is gold and, and SMCI is not, and that's where you get that divergence. And it's not that there aren't trading opportunities to buy a stock that declines from 120 to 30 along the way, if that's really the game that you want to play. The better game, and I think the game that Bill would prefer to play and I would prefer to play, um, is to add the stocks on strength, provided the fundamentals continue to come in, in, in your favor. A healthy bull market sorts out trash from, from the winners, and that's what we continue to see. And I think, again, that's what keeps this from being some sort of a speculative hype bubble. It's just not what's going on right now.